Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to make this. And this was the result of the last tutorial. Now we're going to use that and make those extrusions stick to the surface of Suzanne. All right, let's dive right in. Go back to frame one. I hit shift and cursor left, by the way. So let's put in a mesh monkey. Gives her some subdivisions and yeah, that's good. Now let's put a geometry nodes modifier onto Suzanne and let's just use the one we already have. Okay, so on frame one and we don't need the cube anymore. Let's hide that. Okay, so here we have Suzanne. Cool. We can maybe crank up the density a little bit and also instead of this arc, I probably really want a curve now, I mean a circle. So let's plug that in here. The radius is of course way too big. Still probably. Let's do something like this. Okay, so if we hit uh, spacebar, we have that same animation, only that we're now emitting from our Suzanne head and we still have our sort of a gravity going on here. Cool. So now the first thing we want is to make that extrusion stick to the top or the surface of Suzanne. That's pretty easy to do. All we need is to set the position here, not using this offset. So we have to reset that, but we give it a position and the position is the proximity, geometry proximity of a face and the target would be, well, Suzanne, something like this. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, it's already sticking to Suzanne, but it doesn't look very interesting, does it? We need to introduce some randomness to this whole thing. So if you want something random, a good place to start is a noise texture because that is like a three dimensional where it's in 3D space, all right? So let's put in a shift A texture, noise texture, which gives us a color output, which we can use as a vector. And we can plug that, for example, into our extrude mesh offset here. So instead of extruding out on the normal, we actually extrude out in them, maybe give it some offset, you know, and each extrusion has a different direction, basically. So what if we plug this in here? Uh, one thing we all already know is that this is going to give us values between zero and one, but we all want all directions. So we just need to take a vector math node and subtract 0.5. So we have values between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. That gives us a little bit of an, a random offset. Cool. So what does that look like? Yeah, okay, it's already moving around much more than without this. So if we take this out again, let's watch this again. Mm -hmm. And with it, yep, looks different. But we can improve this a lot. First of all, let's bring the scale down, maybe the detail to one, roughness to zero. And then we set this to 40. So we have a value in here that we can plug in our frame. So the frame number of the animation, and we're changing the noise pattern over time. That's what that does. But this is going to be way too fast. So we already know we need a utilities math node and divide that by something like 0, 5, I mean multiply, sorry. <laughs> multiply. Okay, so we're slowing it down, moving the noise texture, subtracting 0.5 and using that as our extrusion offset. So we extrude in here and then over here in this set position node, we make it stick to the surface again. Then we extrude into some random direction and stick it to the surface again. And that's what's happening in this loop. Let's go back, save, Spacebar. All righty. It's looking cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
there's one thing we can do to improve this a little bit. Think about it. We have a vertex and we have a Suzanne surface. We're extruding in some random direction, which is what we're doing now with using that extrusion offset. Um, and then we make it stick back down to the surface and then extruding in some random direction, make it stick back down to uh, Suzanne's surface. But we're not extruding along the surface, we're just going in some random direction. We might be going straight up and then make it stick back down. So we're not really moving anywhere. Can we improve this? Yes, we could move on the surface or generally along the surface, sort of along the surface uh, for our extrusion offset and then make it stick down to the surface. So we're always moving sort of in this general direction and not up or down. To do this, we have to figure out what is the normal of the surface of Su Suzanne and then our random vector that we get from our uh, noise texture. And now we can use the cross product, which is always the normal to that plane. And that cross product, if this is always the normal and this is some random vector, that cross product vector always points along the surface. So we always get more of a, a directional move and never just an extrusion up or down. So let's try and plug that in here. We are gonna need our geometry input, which is Suzanne, which we have here. And we have to sample an index because we want the normal. So, right, we want the input uh, normal. We want to sample index, which means just sample the surf the, this geometry, Suzanne. Let's put another node in here. And we sample the value of Suzanne's geometry at a certain index. But what index should we plug in here? Well, we could just use sample nearest on Suzanne's geometry, right? Which gives us the position of the nearest vertex on Suzanne's surface. And from that, we want the normal field. So out here we have, this is not float, this is vector. So we take, we get a vector coming out here, uh, which is the normal vector in that location. Then we have our random vector coming out here and we have to mix those together. And we do that with a vector math cross product because the, where's the cross product here? because the cross product is the vector perpendicular to the plane that is defined by two vectors. So that will be that one. And this is the vector that we plug in here now. Okay. So if we scroll out, it looks like this now. Down here we have that. So we're informing our extrusion to go into sort of the right direction to start with. Let's see if it works. Yeah, we have much more movement now. This is a bit much. Let's turn down the resolution so we don't have too many vertices. And I don't know, maybe do 150 frames because on each frame we're generating more geometry and then we're generating sort of a tube onto that geometry. So it becomes a lot after some, after a few frames. But this is already looking really cool. Now, of course, we need some materials. How do we do that? First, I do want to see Suzanne. So back here, I'm going to need a join geometry node. And plug Suzanne in here. Can I do that? Woo! All the way. So we have Suzanne in the background. Also, this needs to be a smooth now set. Shade smooth, that wasn't it. Shift A, set shade smooth. Okay, plug this in here. I have the mode in here now, okay. So now it's smooth. And then of course we want some materials. So let's put on some materials onto Suzanne. Uh, this one should be Suzanne's surface. I know, let's make her greenish. Switch over to rendered view. Okay, Suzanne is green. Where's that lamp? Let's put that over here. Look through the camera. Maybe move 
move in a little. And then the noodles or whatever you want to call them uh, on Susan now, which would be in this output here. We could go uh, material set material use not the pro not this one, but maybe that one. I don't know or material two and set this one to orange. Okay, cool. Looking through the camera. This is our note tree. Go back to frame one, hit space. And this is the animation we get.